Hi, my name is Eve. I'm founder and managing partner of the Python Quants Group. I will today showcase our Python Quants platform for which you can register for free under trial.quantplatform.com. After registration, you can log in under analytics.quantplatform.com. Let us start with some simple interactive financial analytics. First, a necessary import. Second, we tell IPython notebook to plot inline. Third, we retrieve data. In our case, we want to retrieve data for the Apple stock. We provide the symbol. And we want to retrieve it from Yahoo Finance. Now we only need one additional line of code to visualize, for example, the adjusted close values. And you see historical closing values for Apple stock, which we have retrieved and plotted with only four lines of code in an interactive fashion within IPython Notebook. Let us close the IPython Notebook and let us delete it because we won't need it anymore. You find a few more complex and realistic examples as IPython Notebooks in your home directory. For example, one that is called Bitcoin underscore Quandle. This illustrates how to retrieve data from the quandle.com platform, which provides a wealth of free data sets. In this case, Bitcoin exchange rates. You can click into the first cell, for example, and then execute the IPython notebook step by step, cell by cell, by clicking Shift Return. And as we go, we retrieve different data sets that get visualized. And you can use this IPython notebook to analyze the most recently available data for Bitcoin exchange rates and volume. Let us close this too and shut down the kernel. We now go to the file manager. On the left hand side of the file manager you can navigate your folders. You can navigate to subfolders or here in our example, for example, to the analytics, where you find a total of 13 IPython notebooks illustrating the use of our derivatives and risk analytics library, the analytics. There is a public folder which is meant to share files, data sets, and so forth. And we will now use the www folder to upload a Flask based web application and to deploy it on the server. To this end, we navigate to the particular folder, click the Add Files button, choose the respective file, in our case a zip file, upload it by clicking on the Upload File button, and via a right click, we can then unzip the archive. When we navigate to the new folder, we see that there are a few Python files in there and also some subfolders. For example, double clicking on the Python file which is called stock underscore interactive.py, you see that it gets opened by the editor. You could edit this file, save the changes, and close the editor afterwards. We don't have to make any changes here. We will deploy it as it is. To deploy the Flaskbase web application, we need to open a shell. and have to log in. Let us navigate to the new folder with the app store. In. Let us have a look at its content. And the file of interest starts with run underscore. And this is what we need to execute in order to deploy our application. We can now check whether it is indeed running by executing, for example, htop. 
filtering the list for the file name and we see indeed yeah well it's executed let's close this we can also edit files on the shell via using wim for example and if we have a look at the just executed python file we see that it the app is executed on port 8888 let us have a look whether we can access the application and indeed here it is we can with this application retrieve historical stock price data we now choose Microsoft and we can choose two different trends let us choose 50 and 252 days respectively and let us submit the data in the background data is now retrieved from Yahoo Finance and the data gets plotted with the Plotly library. Data transmission takes a while, but the waiting is worth it because what we get back from the Plotly server is an interactive D3 graphic that we can easily explore by hovering over the data. Where we can, for example, zoom in to regions that are of particular interest to us and once you're finished with your analysis, you might auto scale it back to the original scaling. And you might want to have a look at a different symbol afterwards. What I've shown today is how to do interactive financial analytics with our Python Quants platform. And this is not only restricted to using Python. We also provide R and Julia, for example, as languages on the platform and a multitude of functionalities and capabilities more, especially when it comes to collaboration and publishing. These are features that will be shown in another web presentation. In the meantime, if you have further questions or are interested in more resources, please visit pythonquants.com where you find links and further resources and also instructions to get in touch. We'll be more than happy to get in touch with you and to discuss uh, further use cases of our platform. Thank you. My name is Eve. I'm founder managing partner of the Python Quants Group.